biggest opportunities we have is scalability because, you know, just in five years, guys, we've been able to grow this. We now have Wolfpack agents in all 50 states, every Canadian province, and we're in over, I think we're in 15 different nations right now. This is a big opportunity for people that run businesses or scaling them to capitalize on because how many people could they scale through if they're outside the local market? Okay. <laughs> I start digging into this. We're going to go into how to kind of communicate with brokers and team leaders. Uh, this is one of the most important trainings that we need to understand because if you think about it, like let's say you know Ben's talking about buying his uh, rental property. If you buy one rental property versus a hundred rental properties, what do you think as far as your time management going into buying a hundred rental properties? Now think about if you did it through buying a hundred unit apartment complex. Do you think you'd have a little bit less time into doing this, getting to 100 units by buying one property or doing it one by one by one by one by one? So what we're talking about here today is how to accelerate the growth of the business. The fastest growing, biggest growing organizations long term are the ones that figure out how to do two things, recruit cold market agents and bring in teams and brokerages and, and big groups of people all at one time, or also bring in influencers or people with large networks. I guess that'd be a third one. Once we start having conversations with the brokers, let's kind of go through some of the main talking points and some of the biggest benefits for them. So this is a big one, right? Right now, risk mitigation. Now, when markets are hot and markets are exploding, we always test cycles up markets and down markets. Everybody's partying, everybody's celebrating, and it's all a great time, right? When the market's turning, what happens? People are working harder for less, more frustration, harder to control our emotions. People are fighting, problems happening. People are, you know, getting behind on the bills, so they cut corners and lawsuits start happening big time, especially in a litigious business like ours. And what do you think this does to the broker? They're already stressed out because they're already in a recession. They're already struggling to keep bills paid, and now they have legal fees. And now they're going to court all the time. And now they're having expenses. Now, it's not that big a deal when the brokerage is small sometimes, but as it scales, it becomes a much bigger issue. And when you ask a broker, are you trying to scale? Of course they are. So if their problems currently right now, a lot for them with 20 agents, what do you think it's going to be when they have 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 agents, right? So first thing is you want to ask them about, you know, are they having any issues with this side of the business, the risk side, the stress side? Are they having any expenses going to this? Because when they come to EXP, they give up their liability and EXP takes takes that on. So this is one of the biggest reasons if you guys look there in the middle line, if you watch a lot of the podcasts, most of these brokers will tell you that it was a big part of their decision to come on over here like Chuck Fazio and some Kyle Handy and some of these guys, they're getting sued all the time. And it was burning them out emotionally, burning them out financially. And EXP was a safe haven for them to come over here, still have their business, scale their business actually faster, but have all their emotional stress go away and also have all these expenses and extra working parts of their business go away as well. So you just want to kind of go through with them and ask them, you know, not having to deal with legal issues and is this going to free up time? Time. Is this going to free up stress? Is this going to increase your income? Will this give you a better work life, family life balance? How will this change your relationships with your friends and family type of stuff? Okay. So here's some more questions you want to ask them. How much stress could you avoid if you didn't have to worry about being sued all the time? Or if you know that they had a lawsuit, they mentioned they had this, bring up people move away from pain. So when you were going through that, did it cause you problems with your family? Did it cause problems with your partners? Did it cause you this? So reminding them, this is something that you could have happen to you in the future, but not at EXP. Okay. Now, how fast can you scale without having to go? through the legal setup process in different markets. This is a big one. So let's say a broker runs their own business and they're in Miami. Well, John, Susan, what if your cousin or your best friend or someone you're following through social media has a brokerage of 100 agents in Europe or in France or in India or in California or in you know, Manitoba or Alberta, wherever it is? Could you partner with them immediately today? You can't, right? So let's say all of a sudden someone they know has like a 50 person brokerage that wants to align with them with their current model in a different state or country. They don't have the ability to capitalize on that opportunity because they're going to have to go through the legal setup process even if they could do it and afford it and even knew how to do it, it's still a massive headache to go through this. Whereas if they're with the XP, they just send them the link and now they're in a different state or different country overnight. So this is one of the biggest opportunities we have is scalability because you know just in five years, guys, we've been able to grow this. We now have Wolfpack agents in all 50 states, every Canadian province, and we're in over, I think we're in 15 different nations right now. This is a big opportunity for people that run businesses or scaling them to capitalize on because how many people could they scale through if they're outside the local market? Okay, One of my mentors always taught me this, that that our income is directly related to the size of our market share if we have the demand for a current product already. Meaning, let's say McDonald's starting out in one city. You know, probably seen the, what is the movie, The Founder, right? Start out that little shop. Then we found out there's demand for this product or service nationally, then globally, right? So let's say you have 10,000 agents in your local market versus a couple hundred thousand versus a couple million. The same model with the same demand, which has the biggest opportunity. So if you build a successful business locally, you can maybe make a million dollars. That's what my mentor told me. Build it nationally, you can make 
make multiple millions, but globally, you can make billions, meaning the larger you scale as far as market share, the faster the duplication can grow as far as how you can grow your business. So when you want to go into scalability with them. And so when I talk to a broker, I talk about how many agents are in their current market share. Is it 5,000, 50,000, 10,000? And I explain to them immediately overnight with partnering with XP, you open up your global market share to almost 2 million agents. We're currently right now, you have 15,000 agents locally. And then down there at the bottom, I go into social media with them. I explain to them, so you're building social media. Let's say they have a decent following. You ask them this question. You say, well, John, how many agents out of those 10,000 followers do you have are operating in your local market? How many of them are local to you? Because if you have 10,000 people following you, maybe a few hundred are in your local market. They're scattered out all around the world, all around different states and different countries. So what that means is these team leaders, these agents, these brokers are investing a lot of time, energy, and money to build their social media following, yet they can't even really capitalize or tap into it because it's not local to them. So this is going to give them immediate ability to reach out to their social media following in different states and countries and start partnering with them. It's going to give them the, the increased ability to scale their business. Okay. Now let's go into kind of the next kind of conversation flow we go through. So we've talked about risk mitigation and avoiding stress and expenses and law lawsuits and all that. We've talked about scalability, have a bigger opportunity to scale. Now we go into management and employee expenses. So right now, if you aren't aware of it, most brokerages on the West Coast and East Coast are either going out of business, they're flat or they're net negative, and they will be for the next year or two as this market corrects and comes back before they become profitable again. What this is opening up is a, one of the biggest opportunities that we'll ever have to grow this because a lot of brokers and teams that we're bringing on just a year or two ago were blowing us off saying this doesn't make sense. And we talked to them a year or two ago saying we're heading into this recession. This could get it kind of tied on expenses. And now they're all starting to come over here. So the higher the price point, the market, the more likely that brokerage is to be struggling right now. Just keep that in mind. So the West Coast, the East Coast, high price point markets averaging 500K and up, these are going to be the brokerages that are really kind of struggling. What do you think they're struggling with if they're struggling? The stress, emotion, loss of money, the expenses, right? So we always want to touch on the expenses. So let's look at that first one right there. For $85 a month, EXP gives you a $100 million employee force. There's almost 2,000 paid employees. Conservatively, if they're working for 50K a piece, that's a $100 million employee force. And so when you think about that, they're going to handle everything from the training to the accounting to the legal to the payment processing, pretty much start to finish. So your income goes up right there in line two. I explained to them every single time somebody at EXP that's an employee does an activity that you would have to do normally. So let's say the broker does contract review. So let's say they spend 30 minutes to an hour. Let's just say they do an hour helping an agent with a contract and a, a transaction. When they partner with EXP, that EXP broker is going to do this. So I explained to them the hour that you used to have to put into your business, what is it doing now? It's back in your pocket because it's done by somebody else now. So for $85 a month, you have this happening nationwide, globally wide. So what are you going to do with this hour now? You can put it back into your business to grow your business, or you can give that hour to your friends and family to better your relationships. So it's your hour now. So every single time from a second to an hour, Hour to a minute to any time expense, look at your hourly income. And every single time someone takes this off your plate, that's a raise of your income. So every single day right now, we have employees at the company doing all sorts of things that if we were the business owner, we would have to do on our own. This is why we can scale because we're not tied up in our business. We're working on our business. The behind the scenes is happening by EXP, which is usually what keeps people from slowing. Then I go into the expense to hire an employee. So I ask them, okay, I say, if you scale your business, you're going to do it on your own from zero to 10,000 agents or zero to a thousand agents or whatever, pointing out that they can't get there on their own, they're going to have to start hiring people. Now you want to ask them, what's the headache of hiring, John? What's the headache of hiring, Susan? How much does it cost? What is a typical employee going to cost you to hire just a single employee right now? Is it 50, 75,000, 100,000? Now, if you've looked out there in the marketplace, there's just great employees all over the place coming in. I mean, you can't even, you got fast food places that can't even keep people hired right now, right? So where are they going to find these people? They're going to find quality, talented people. They're going to stay with them long-term that aren't going to split on them and build their own business essentially. So you're going down this process with them, helping understand, even if you could find that person, you're giving up an expense to do so. And this is kind of where I hit them with like a closing question. They say they're going to pay $60,000 to hire one person. And I say, what do you think is better? I'm going to put you two options on a piece of paper here. Now, as an entrepreneur, you can pay $60,000 for one employee or $85 a month for 2,000 employees, which do you think makes more sense as a business owner? 